Aloha and welcome to Connection to the Cosmos with your host, me, Dr. Lisa Thompson, where I have out of this world conversations with extraordinary people. Today, I am super excited to have on one of my dearest people in my life, Seth Dietlin. We're going to bring him on in just a moment. The first, a few announcements. If you have not had the opportunity yet to grab my free 20 minute meditative journey to meet your galactic family and guides, make sure you do that on my website, drlisajthompson.com or mysticmanta.com. Also, I am leading a certification program, my Galactic Ascension Channel certification program online February 22nd and 23rd. So if you are a healer and you wanna add on to your modalities or really enhance your abilities, then this is for you. And I'm also leading my galactic retreat next year, April 30th to May 4th here on the big island of Hawaii. So if you're interested in really connecting with your galactic family and guides, this retreat is for you. And all that information is on drlisajthompson.com, mysticmanta.com. And then if you're coming to the big island of Hawaii anytime throughout the year, then come on one of my Big Island UFO tours where you will see the night sky in a whole new way using my advanced generation three military night vision goggles. Okay, so without further ado, we're gonna bring on Seth. Hello, Seth. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Nice to be oh. here, aloha. <laughs> so happy to have you here. This has been a year in the making. And so let me yes. share um, your bio with everyone because you have a really, you know, really interesting backgrounds and everything that you do and um and then we'll get into the conversation so seth dietlin is a human potential activator and a thought leader in the realm of conscious living a multifaceted professional he is a filmmaker content creator certified hypnotherapist angel psychic communicator and energy healer author of ascension with the angels tarot Seth designs and facilitates courses and events to empower others in accessing higher levels of conscious awareness through angelic communication and the quantum field of intelligence. As an angel communicator, Seth shares revelations and guidance from the angels, focusing on humanity's role in ushering in the new earth and navigating the ongoing transformational process. Okay, so you and I, we met it's been, it's just over a year ago, we met, mm -hmm. we crossed paths at a beach here in Hawaii, Beach 69. Yes. And yes. our our mutual friend Jason introduced us, but it was like, for me, and maybe for you, it was like this instant for me spark too. connection. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I, um, you know, I have loved developing this friendship with you. Yes. And I don't even know, I'm going to ask you the first question, though, because I don't even know this about you, even though, because, you know, we talk about other things, current things. Right. But I am curious about your background in terms of how you grew up, spiritual, religious, something else, so that we know, like, how you got into this whole angel thing. Well, my family was super duper Catholic. So Ooh. Catholic, <laughs> there was a crucifix <laughs> in every room. Oh, and. Okay. Uh, Yes, <laughs> very, very Catholic. And my mother answered the phone, Jesus loves you. And uh, everyone knew that my mom was religious. She would honk her horn and say, honk, if Jesus loves you. She'd tell everyone that Jesus loves you. And uh, it was very, 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 very Catholic and very, very religious. It was interesting to observe because I consider myself now in retrospect having been awake at that time, because when I was in church, which is all the time, the way that we were forced to, I was also an altar boy doing Stations mm. of the Cross and all that kind of good stuff. I just remember hearing stuff that the church would say, we believe this. And I'd be like, I don't believe that. <laughs> and it's not to destroy people who are Catholic and who believe those things. It's just that they can believe it, but I didn't. And so I asked the priest one day, what happens if I don't believe that stuff? They're like, well, you have to believe it because we believe it. I go, but your beliefs are personal. You can't tell me what to believe. So I remember being in a very, very Catholic background and finding it really interesting to adjust to that. I also went to Catholic school and I found it very odd that those were the meanest people in the world that I had dealt with, like the teachers, the nuns, the students. They were just like very unkind people. And they were supposed to be in a church that represented, you know, following a being you just went muted. 
You just muted yourself, babe. You're still muted. Yeah, down at the bottom. Technical difficulties. It's all good. So at the bottom, there's a mute where you can leave the studio as well. Oh, there we go. There you go. You're back. Yes. Awesome. yes. <laughs> So apparently I was supposed to say that, but yes, I grew up, I grew up Catholic. <laughs> okay. So, um, I know that you, you have a kind of normal mainstream, like business background, kind of like I do, you were in the real estate mm -hmm. industry, right? So, yes. um, tell, so I want the audience to understand your transition from okay, being a you know, in Catholic school, going to this, but not, you know, resonating with it to then your normal kind of mainstream careers and then how you transitioned into being an angel communicator and all the things that you do. Yes. Well, first of all, I loved being in the real estate industry. I was a real estate agent in Southern California and it was kind of at the height of it too. So it was super fun very lucrative, but it was also fun at that time. People had a really good spirit about them and really lighthearted, especially in Southern California. And so it was a lot of fun. I found myself in that industry after working in the travel business, in the airline industry, which fascinated me because I love to travel, but certainly I do have a well um, meaning pragmatic side, meaning I'm not really like all in the clouds, even though a lot of the stuff that we understand at that level is pretty incredible, but it has to have some practical and tangible meaning. And so there was a time I had a setback, both in a personal relationship and in business, uh, because business could fluctuate when you worked in that realm. And it was a moment where I felt like I wanted to leave this place. Now, I will also share that when I was in school, I was bullied, I didn't have friends. And I have friends now from school who are my friends now, but there was no close friendships in school and I felt like I didn't belong. And I was bullied by the boys in high school and I was kind of an outcast. And I really know why now because I felt different and related to life differently. And on some level they sensed it too. And so I felt out of place. So when I did finally expand into some sense of greatness. When I achieved some success in real estate, I started working out with a trainer. I started getting into good shape. And there were things that I was achieving that really felt good to achieve. So I didn't feel like I was on the underside of life. So when I had a few setbacks in a personal relationship and with my business, I felt like I was being pulled back down into that under layer. And it was really, really defeating. And in that moment, I actually you know, hadn't really had conversations with the divine being or God, whatever you want to call that. And I just said, hey, God, you know what? I don't want to be here anymore. This is not a great experience. And I said, you said that we can have whatever we want. And so I'm asking you, I just want to go to sleep and I want to go back to wherever we came from. And about the time that I realized that that wish wasn't going to be uh, granted, I said, all right, you know what? I know you're not going to give me that. So what about this? You say, I have angels. I want to talk to them. I want to see them. I want a tangible relationship. I don't want to believe them without having something tangible in my life to prove that I'm connected to them. And the minute I said that, I felt something touch me. I felt this peace overcome me that I can't explain. I felt this energy surround me like as you would if there were people around you that you just couldn't see. My dog and cat got up on the bed. They looked around because they could perceive something. And I heard something. And when I describe heard something, it comes through your knowing. And it was this knowing that said, Seth, everything's going to be not just okay. It's going to be better than okay. So I went to sleep. And I woke up the next morning. And I was like, whoa, what was that? What did I drink last night? What did I take? <laughs> I don't know. How, what to make of that experience. And as I was trying to connect it to some 
form of reality, I heard something inside say hello. And the voice said, you may think that we came to you in response to your experience, your setback, but you actually had that setback so that you could call on us because it's time for us to work together. And I said, work together. Wow, that's great. Like, what does that mean? So over time, just briefly, you know, they started to tell me things in the morning that would happen and they would come true. So one day they told me your sister Kara is going to call you today and she's pregnant with a little girl. So four hours later, my sister calls me. She says, I have news. I already knew what the news was. And so I asked her if she's going to have, you know, a little girl. She said she didn't know. But of course, my niece was born a few months later. And a fun aside to that story is even the journey of continuing to communicate with them and work with them from that day, it has its fluctuations, as does with the galactics as well. There's moments where you're like, am I really connected to something powerful? Because we go in and out of what feels effective to us. And one of those moments when my niece was maybe three or four, um, I was having some doubts, you know, because I was having another low moment, another other moment of teaching and learning. And mm -hmm. in the middle of all that, my sister calls me and says that my niece wants to talk to me. And I'm like, okay. So she's still in that stage where she's connected. And mm -hmm. she said, hi, Uncle Seth, do you remember when the angels told you I was coming? And I never told my sister or her about that experience. She had somehow or another remembered it as a soul. So wow. we go along and basically they... Um, not just talked about self-empowerment, but talked about an upcoming change for the new earth and that we would all have a spiritual awakening like this on this planet to bring in what they called heaven on earth or that this earth would move into um, condition that would closely resemble the energy of the creative source. Beautiful. Okay. So there's, I mean, Again, I, so many things here. So when did you fully embrace um, that you were communicating with the angels to then actually do it as a career? Right. So from day one, I was like, wow, this is fun. This is super cool because the miracles are pretty addicting. And it was pretty illuminating as well as expansive is the way that I would describe it now. And I had these most amazing miracles happen to me in reality where I felt like I was in a different version of reality. So I loved it. And I continued to do my work, just not tell people about it. Gradually, what would happen is that through my conversations, I would get guidance to go be helpful to other people. Call this person, invite them to lunch. Call this person. This person doesn't feel well. Bring them soup, whatever it was. And then when I was with them, I'd hear, you know, something inside and then I'd say something and it would make a difference. Very often I would leave someone's house or like having a coffee with them because I'd been guided to by the angels and halfway home my phone would ring and they'd explain that some miracle had happened and they didn't know that whatever I told them was angelically inspired because they didn't even know I was talking to them at the time. So that was my first version of stepping into doing readings or one-on-one -on -one sessions and bringing that because it's not just the information that comes through very often with my work people will come to me later and, and even today i got a really cool uh, message from someone who's experienced amazing miracles from doing our work which is that when we're working with them they're going to shift us into something a frequency as well as their guidance where we create miracles so that was the first thing they told me that i would lose everything to do what i was supposed to do with them and in 2006, 7, 8, when the real estate market collapsed in the real estate bubble, I lost everything. And that's when I got the guidance that I should start doing readings and helping people with this gift. I never wanted to do it to charge people. I just loved doing it to help people. But then it became apparent that I was supposed to do it and create energy exchange. Yeah. And that happened out of necessity more than anything. Because I still see myself as like a regular person who is uh, business focused and very and has a very pragmatic side as well. But it ended up working and becoming very powerful. Okay, so when the angels come through, um, tell me which clairs you're experiencing. So definitely claircognizance, which is the you know the knowing. 
Um, I do get clairvoyance, I get visions, and I get clairsentience a lot. And oddly, I don't know which one is the smell, but I get that one too. Okay. So yeah, yeah it's very interesting. I had a reading one time, the first time it ever came through. I'm sorry, not smell, but smell and taste. Oh, mm -hmm. So I was ta I was tasting cherry pie when I was had doing a, a reading on the phone, and I said, "Why am I tasting cherry pie?" And she goes, "I just made one for this person that I'm talking about." So sometimes I'll taste various things as well, but it's whatever it needs to do. But mostly clairvoyance uh, because ability to see things. And the weird part about that, as you know, is a lot of times you'll see these random shapes. But somehow or another, you know what they mean. Like you might see a pyramid that's blue next to a couple of um, green circles and like a red triangle. And somehow or another, you know that that means something and you're able to translate it into English. So it's really weird how clairvoyance work. It's not just images of something. Like they'll mm -hmm. often show images that are just like downloads and you can see weird like wallpaper patterns and stuff like that. Okay. Well, I, I love that explanation. No one, no one that I've talked to has ever explained it in that way. Cause I think most people think that if you're clairvoyant, that you have to see the actual thing of whatever it's representing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, I love that. A lot of times. Yes. A lot of times I'll see something that's a code. So when I see something, I just let it expand into revealing why it's there. And I'll assume that it's either a code or a message or it means something that's right on. And sometimes I'll say to someone, say, I'm seeing an image of this. And then their eyes will get big and they'll know exactly why. And sometimes it'll be something rather specific and they'll get it. So, so allowing it to be um, open in a way where it will reveal what it's supposed to instead of having something that's rigid that it has to mean what it has to mean okay excellent so i mean i'm i'm curious how you know how to decipher which angels are coming to you because i know oh, that I you that. are very clear you know in terms of who who is coming through right i love that question so first of all all the time that i've been working with the angels they're a field of oneness so if you take the original source in its purest forms, and it's funny because Bashar says this, which is someone that appeals to probably many of the people in your audience, mm -hmm. is that as source expanded to create reality, the first layer of, as Bashar says, is reflection, is the something that's really close to the source, which is this beingness or field of energy that's the next layer from source. So it's always just been... Uh, an energy, a layer of consciousness that's very close to source. And the whole time that I've worked with them, it's never been with any names. I've worked okay. with what I called Archangel Metatron, and I've worked with what we call Archangel Michael, and just called on them specifically because their architect, their archetypes represent a capacity of that band of energy. And so mm -hmm. in a certain way, because we live in a world where we're externalizing separation through each other, we've given ourselves the opportunity to communicate with that field of intelligence by uh, externalizing various energy fields that we might call Archangel Raphael, Archangel Metatron, or whoever that we might call it that. But they're not actual beings, just the same way we're not actual beings. We're, yeah. we're something else. And so that's an, an important distinction, but working with their archetypes are an important way of working with that aspect of the field of intelligence. So when Metatron first came to me, he came to me in a spaceship, which is great. And he explained to me why he would come to me in a spaceship. And then I often have meetings with some of the archangels, keeping in mind that there are projections still, but I have these meetings with the archangels and we always meet in spaceships. Now, one of the things that's very important to note is that when you talk about the layers from the source, you start from the original purest source, which would be maybe what a lot of people call God, or when mm -hmm. we refer to the universe or the source, it's that part of our energy field 
that's remaining pure in unconditional love and the highest frequency. And then the layer outside of that is the angelic realm, which is basically a bridge between the source and creation. And creation is still a hologram or imagination. And then we go more into that. So there are, as we know, other beings from other realities that are vibrating at a frequency that are a little bit closer or a little bit higher in frequency and a little bit more in closer range with say the angelic realm. So in a certain way, the angelic realm can actually embody themselves in what we'd call extra dimensionals or extraterrestrials. Yes. And Metatron once explained to me, and I love this because there's no past, present and future. He really went into talking about time past, present, and future, there's no such thing. And we know that when we transcend time, we go, oh, that's what that means. There is no linear time. Well, in that sense, we also don't have really past lives. We have simultaneous lives because yeah. our awareness simultaneously occupies other beings. Well, at, as an angel communicator, I also have always resonated with like Star Trek and sci-fi and just this more evolved beingness that's available on other planets where there isn't the mockery of spirit or mockery of the light that exists in our infrastructure here for now. Yeah. And <laughs> so there's this perfection that exists there and thinking about traveling in the spaceships and traveling and seeing all this wonderful creation in all these planets. Well, in order to get into this density, for those of us that are here as part of bringing in the new earth, we've been in bodies. We may even be part of the angelic realm, but we've been in bodies as we've kind of gone down the scale. So we have or are simultaneously in bodies of higher vibrating um, beings that live in, on other planets or in higher vibrating realities. We're simultaneously in those while we're in this body so that we can actually be supported by a higher frequency. Now, through these conversations with these angels, I also discovered that there are many, let's say, beings that are we would consider extra dimensionals, but they aren't necessarily from other planets. They are on ours as well. And the first time that I encountered that, there was a way that I was in communication with the angels and I was taken through astral to this um, society that lives underwater in of all places, Hawaii, right off the big island. And this is before I went to the big island and met you. But this race, when I was with them, one of the first things they said is that your people or the people of you know this world, we're not the only people that are occupying this planet, not even right. in the least. We may be the only ones we see because mm -hmm. of frequency and dimensions that are established by frequency, but we're not at all the only people that are on this sphere. So there are other higher vibrating um, societies or higher vibrating populations. And I visited one. And one of the interesting things when I had visited them is that I felt this wonderful peace where worry or concern wasn't even in a range. And they said, your people may dive down to this part of the ocean, but they'll never find us because we're in too high of a frequency. And oddly, maybe two days later, I was doing hypnosis for someone else and she found them too, just mm. as validation that I had found them. So it was kind of cool. So that's why we get to have this wonderful connection. The angels and the extra dimensionals are not in separation or two different trains of thoughts. They're actually in complete unity with a more expanded sense of consciousness and self. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Well, and so now your angels are really strongly coming through to help shift into this new earth paradigm. Let's talk about yes. that. And the miracles are off the charts. And mm. we've been seeing things like I was in a restaurant when I started actually really working with the archangels and their archetypes. 
And I went into a restaurant one day and I saw someone walk by and they were wearing a shirt that said angel and a feather just actually materialized right in front of my eyes and it just sort of dropped. And they've been doing that ever since then. But that was also helping us to know that by tapping into these higher fields of frequency and calibrating with them, that things that were limited for us are no longer limitations because they're only limited for us, not because they're not possible, but because we're not in frequency range. And as we're raising in this frequency range, more of what seemed impossible is now possible. So I've been getting some real good nuggets from the archangels. Archangel Gabriel shared with me a little bit about how we already know that we have the ability to manifest anything via spontaneous combustion because we are a piece of the divine and that's how the divine creates. I used the joke that God did not go to Goldman Sachs one day and said, can I borrow $100,000 because I want to create a giraffe today? So creation doesn't happen the way that we think it happens that we're so tied into in this frequency. I know that actually instantly gives us a shift into what's possible for us and what we don't see. And we go, oh, that's right. I'm a piece of this. Well, we're starting to reclaim a piece of this. And this is the important part of this work. This is the important part of bringing in the new earth. This is why when we do our sessions with people, they aren't just like talk, 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 talk. It's actually a calibration. People leave us. Mm -hmm. And because of that frequency and in all humility, it's not from us, but through us. But when people leave us, they go and the things that were impossible to them before are now possible. Someone who couldn't get pregnant will get pregnant. Someone who had a financial difficulty will suddenly move through it. Things like that will happen because we tap into this frequency. Well, Archangel Gabriel said, you know, you're fascinated with the idea of spontaneous creation. He said, but by the way, you've been doing it this whole time. He said, right now, you may feel that everything that you bring into your reality, that you're doing it as a chain reaction caused by a transaction. He said the transaction is also of your spontaneous creation. So it's just something that you did to amuse yourselves. And pretty soon, you're not going to want to amuse yourselves with that transaction anymore. You'll just get right to bringing what you want in. Now, a side note to that, once I got that message from Gabriel, I'm doing some moving around and I was about to shift into Sedona and I was looking for an Airbnb in Sedona. And I was, it was on the list to go in and look at Airbnb. But I hadn't done it yet. And this was 12 hours after Archangel Gabriel gave this message. A friend of mine called me who I hadn't talked to in quite a while. And she said, hey, I hear you're coming to Sedona. I have a condo that's for sale and vacant. Feel free to stay there as long as you want. That really represents finding a place to be and stay that transcended the transaction. It just materialized and came to me in another form. So it was validation that we're just bringing in whatever we need and want, but more directly now. And that should excite anyone who's hearing this because that's what we're doing this for. We're not yeah. doing this for any other reason except to tap into that level of power, which gets us real excited because that's who we are. And another goodie that I really, really liked is that Archangel Uriel has come in and he comes in and he helps us dispel illusions. So he helps us work through which part of our reality is an illusion that we set up for ourselves to teach ourselves and isn't really real so that we can actually dissolve it and go to what is real, which is our power. And one of the things he reminds us of is that we create through perception. And he said to me one time, blessed are those who can see what's not actually there for they will have it. He said, for those who only see what they can see, the picture will remain static, which mm. reminds us of all the times when we affirm, oh, but this isn't here. I don't have this. This isn't that way. We see something that's devoid of that. And if I go back to that giraffe scenario, and of course, God didn't, or the creator didn't go to Goldman and Sachs that day, the Goldman Sachs that day. It was imagining something that didn't exist before, and it materialized from that. Guess what? Archangel Uriel says, we have the same power 
which is why it's not just visualization, but it's about not actually believing that we see a vacancy. It's about knowing that if we desire something, that it's already there. And when we see it there, then it has to materialize, which is perfect. So I mostly work with them as far as manifesting miracles. And I love teaching that work. I teach people how to communicate with them for the purpose of manifesting. People take my angel communication class, which I have as a digital course. And after the first week, people go, man, the miracles are off the charts. That's the fun part. Beautiful. Well, so I know that you and I, we've had conversations about kind of the chaos going on and perceived 3D reality, right? So yes. let's, let, I would love for you to share what the angels have to say about what is going on right now and and how we do actually shift to the new earth, that reality. Yeah. Well, it's incredible that they share with me that 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 is not in alignment with the light. And that would be any system that works through mind or linearity instead of heart centered. You know, back in 2006, when I was going through a big uh, 2006, when I was going through bankruptcy, I thought, wasn't that funny that we live in a system that once you're no longer earning money and it's from, through no fault of your own, it punishes you instead of supports you. That's a mind centric or ego centric system as opposed to a heart centric system. So any system that is mind centric, it's actually being dissolved as we speak, as we upgrade, and it's being replaced with things that are heart centric. Heart is more expansive. Imagine if we had some form of currency, and this will be coming online, that works the same way the heart does or the way that the divine does through unlimited creation. And so as we go through, what's going to happen is that automatically a lot of what we um, would consider a restriction on humanity's creativity and stepping into its full um, power to create is just literally going to vanish through timeline shifts. So this is not something that we have to be at war with in our mind. It's not something we need to worry about. Because as we keep heightening our frequency, something will play out to separate from us, it from us. Something will play out to continue to give us the show that it is dissolving, collapsing, or moving out of existence, and it's becoming obsolete. And so this will happen through a process. I remember, and this is one thing that I hope will give people peace of mind, when I first started communicating with them 20 years ago, they gave me some dreams that revealed that there were people on this planet that didn't really have humanity's best interest at heart and actually had their own agenda, let's say. And yeah. soon after that, I got all of those pieces of what the angels were showing me revealed with understanding the construct of what we call the false matrix because it doesn't really exist. But about 10 years into expanding with the angels, but also learning more and more about the construction of the false matrix, I said to them, how on earth are we going to bring in the new earth? And they said, consciousness. Mm. There will be no war. There will be no, in other words, there'll be no war between good and bad like that. There will be nothing like what we're, what people are afraid of. There'll be nothing mm -hmm. like that. They said, it'll be consciousness you'll literally go into a level of awareness that you have to recreate the external world. That's what they said is what we would discover the capacity to do and then do it. And that's what we're doing right now. Even though it plays out as external events, we're actually creating those. Yeah. Well, and I think that's what a lot of people don't understand and they're buying into whatever they're seeing, like you're saying, mm -hmm. instead of really tuning into their own selves and really like clearing away whatever judgments, whatever realities that are not supporting them to shift and have that consciousness. Well, it's something we've all been there because when I first discovered mm -hmm. the construction of the false matrix, I was there too, because I was also in my humanity. So it is a part of the process of getting to the piece where you do understand your creative potential 
and understanding the power that you have to utilize it for the recreation or the dissolve of the old world. This is something really great to work with Archangel Uriel with because Archangel Uriel is about helping us decipher what's illusion and what's real. And so a, lot, a big part of this is, of course, we lived in a world that we thought was completely benign. We thought that the certain constructs and structures around us served us and were innocent and were part of a beneficial package that kept humanity going in a positive direction. And then we just we have to deconstruct and reconstruct our reality to discover that the opposite is true. And then we go, well, what do we do with that information? And here we are in this space where we realize, oh, guess what? Um, this is part of actually realizing that we are the creator and that we created this world to actually upgrade ourselves through knowing and being in this experience. Because the false matrix is of our creation but we didn't create it to defeat us. We created it to expand with an experience to see who we truly are as powerful creators. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, fun while we were creating giraffes and and beautiful birds and stuff like that. Yeah. We were like, well, I, I, almost, I almost visualized that after we or the collective that we are that would be called the creative source, God or whatever, we got done creating waterfalls and birds and we're like, well, let's up the game a little bit and let's create, you know, a, a, a resolve against our perceived opposite. But where do I find an opposite? Well, I guess I'm going to have to create one first, but it'll all be right. pure illusion. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I love that. So is there anything else in this moment that the angels want to share with the audience? before we get to talking about how you work with clients. Yeah. You know, the reason that I do this and appear on shows and want to reach you that's in the audience is because after we communicate with, like in your case, the galactics, or in my case, the angels, which is really this, the same field of energy, but in different frequencies, I guess you could say. Uh, when we do that, uh, we get to understand that we have a calling and that calling is to convey that peaceful and loving energy that becomes empowerment and the only reason that we do this work because it's more lucrative to do other things yeah financially <laughs> if i were still selling real estate i'd make about 20 times what i make financially but it doesn't matter because we live in abundance in a different way. And still even resources come in that help yes. us to live in abundance. But the reason that we are here is to convey an energy and a message that you and the audience, you're more powerful than you think. And right now, when you look at your experience and you're feeling stuck and you're feeling like life is too challenging right now, it's only because it's activating this really fun power that you have to create a different reality. So when you frame it as such, you're gonna to start to have a lot more fun. You're gonna meet other people that are on the same wavelength and you'll hear things from them that will make more sense than what you've heard in the external reality. So we're here purposely to make an influential um, wave of energy that gives you an opportunity to tap into this as well and to see miracles beyond your current belief yeah beautiful so how um if someone is interested in working with you what what kinds of things do you do with your clients and what what offerings do you have wonderful i've created a community first and foremost because that's one of the biggest things that we need is we need to connect with other people who understand us so i have a community that i offer and um, i do various events which are basically meditative events I also teach an angel communication class, and then I'm also about to launch a course that teaches how to manifest and connect with the angels and expand consciously through the tarot, with the tarot deck that I created and a couple of other decks as well. That's coming online soon too. But I also have another layer of my community that's all about uh, communing with other people who want to tap into that higher energy field for the purpose of manifesting and creating. 
And in one-on-one -on -one sessions, I either offer readings, which are direct messages from your angels. And when I do hypnotherapy, I do uh, accessing the Akashic records and meeting your angels and spirit guides, as well as everything else like the stop smoking. But I bring the angels into every session, which is a lot of fun. So people have angel encounters through hypnosis. And we do that, connect with departed loved ones, and we do that with the help of the angels. And we also rewrite scenes, which is a lot of fun. So we rewrite scenes from our past that are limiting us today. Yeah, beautiful. Well, and, you know, we do similar work in that way. And it's just fantastic yes. the way that we can rewrite, we can recreate. And what that does yes. then when you come out of it is it rewires the brain to the new reality. Well, and of course, time doesn't travel only in one direction. And I right. remember going into these sessions where I help people rewrite in hypnosis something. And it's very interesting because when people go in to do it, the higher mm -hmm. self gives them an experience that they had totally forgot and didn't realize that the experience had left a subconscious limiting belief that we're about to dissolve. Mm -hmm. And as we work through that, what's interesting is we replay the scene and each time we replay it, the thing didn't happen. I've always known it to be that we've rewritten the scene entirely. In other words, make it as though it didn't happen. But people just believe that it was part of shifting perception. But one time I had a client, this was so cool. She had an eating disorder that she was working on. And we went back into a scene where she discovered that she was crying and feeling destabilized because her parents were about to get divorced. And who wouldn't when you're like 11 or 12 years old? So we went back and rewrote that scene. And then when she came out, she had these great big eyes and she said, oh my gosh, I just realized something. When I was crying that day, I remember feeling a presence of someone around me. Now I realize that it was me in today's mm -hmm. hypnosis working on that. And it just gave me goosebumps when she said that. I was like, wow, I love that I got to experience this because when we do rewrite these scenes, we're actually mm -hmm. technically rewriting them. Yeah, beautiful. So how do people find you and what socials and all the things are you on? Yeah. So just go to talktomyangels.com. It's T-A-L-K-T-O, myangels.com. And that is a place where you can uh, reach out to me, book sessions, or find out about anything else. If you want to reach out to me and contact me. I'm also on Instagram at talk to my angels uh, as well. Okay. Thank you so much for being on with me. And I can't wait to see Thank you in you person soon. <laughs> yes, yes. Probably in the next few weeks. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank yeah, you for having me. Hug. And for those yes. of you listening and watching, you know, definitely reach out to Seth. Amazing work that you do. And thank, um, you. thank you for being one of my beautiful community members, yeah, you, part of my tribe. Right, and, you, and your work is beautiful as well. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. And so for those of you watching or listening, thank you for being here. And I'll see you next time on Connection to the Cosmos. Aloha.